Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Julie. I am a homeschooling mom of five and we are about to start. Actually, when you see this video, this is the week. This is the week that we are starting my ninth year of homeschooling. I am pretty excited about what I have to share with you guys today. So typically every year I like to show you just a glance at our homeschool schedule. Uh, in the past, I would just kind of have my schedule in my mind. <laughs> this is how our days are going to go. Now I have to, I have to write it down. I have to get it on paper. Um, so I'm going to show you our schedule. I'm also going to show you the planners I got for my two oldest kids. And I'm also going to show you our chore chart. So lots of fun stuff. It took a lot of, mostly just a lot of thinking to get this all put together. I have five kids that are all doing school this year. So this is my first year dividing my time between five kids that are being homeschooled. I wouldn't necessarily say that that is harder than when I had three kids that was homeschooling and a preschooler and a baby. Um, but it's just, it's just something new. It's just different than what we've done in the past. And so this schedule I'm going to show you. I have, feel like I have to just give this little disclaimer before I show it because if you just see my schedule, you might think, oh, she's super rigid and she's going to be um, just very scheduled every day and no thinking outside the box, no flexibility. And that's not true. I do write down a rigid, so to speak, schedule. I do have time blocks where we're doing certain subjects. And that is just because I need to know um, at what point I need to be helping this child and this child and this child. A lot of them still need a bit of um, like assistance from me. And so I just have to kind of organize my thoughts and like, where am I going to do in what order should I be doing these subjects? Now, you know, I wrote down that our school day starts about nine o'clock. Some days it might start at 9.30 and that's okay. Everything can kind of just be shifted. There is some wiggle room in this. I just want to have something I can look at and think if we had a, per if we had a perfect, perfect school day, this is how it would look. And if we skip, have to skip something or switch times or start late, that is just fine and I am okay with that. I think you get what I'm saying as a mom to five. I just kind of have to have, um, my day organized somewhat. So this schedule I got this year, this is the first time I've used this one. I bought this printable from Etsy. I kind of went back and forth on it because I was like, that seems pricey. I think I paid $6 and it's just this like simple, simple thing. Um, but it was the best one I could find. And so I bought it and I will continue to use it. I can adjust it through the year. I can just reprint it, um, redo our schedule, and I can use it in future years. Now, the reason for me that it was so hard to find a good schedule, I will just quickly show you what this looks like, is because I wanted to find one where I, so they sell a lot of them like this, and it'll be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in those top blocks. Our school days almost all will look the same Monday to Thursday. Friday is when we meet with our homeschool group and so we have a very different day and we are not going to follow this on Fridays. But Monday to Thursday is the same so I don't need to have a schedule where I'm writing down every single day. Um, but I wanted to have my kids each having their own column uh, where they could each see what they're doing. And again this is quite honestly less for the kids and more for me so I can see what am I supposed to be doing with Zara right now what should I be doing um I know the older kids will look at it too I will get this laminated and put it up on our wall um but I will just go through now and just kind of tell you what I have in each of the blocks and I will have some b-roll where you can see it a little bit closer so I started at seven o'clock and I said okay we're gonna get up breakfast breakfast chores I'll, I'll explain more about those chores in a minute when I show you our tour chart. And then for Elijah and Simeon, I would like them to practice the piano. They are both up right first thing in the morning. They are up by seven. And so I'm not sure in what order we'll do it, if that will be like right when they wake up or if they'll have breakfast first and then do piano. We'll, I think we'll figure that out as the year goes on, what works best, but uh, that's what's going to be in that first seven o'clock block. At nine o'clock, I wrote down workout. So what I do is I turn on a YouTube video. What we've been doing a lot in the past, 
Well, my younger ones love Dance and Freeze videos, so sometimes we do those. Those are very little kiddish. Um, and then even the older ones enjoy, I'm forgetting what it's called right now, Dojo Go is what it's called. It's a YouTube channel and it's a lot of, um, sorry, I'm just gonna adjust my camera a little bit. It's a lot of uh, like karate videos. I think what happens is I set my camera up and then I sit and I'm like, okay, this is a good spot. And then as I talk, I'm kind of like sinking lower and lower <laughs> into the couch and I'm like, I feel like I'm too low in the camera right now. Um, so I turn on that workout video and if the kids don't all make it to that workout, that's fine. Uh, but most of them enjoy it. So it kind of encourages them to get through their chores and stuff quickly when that, when that is starting. And then at 9.15, I wrote down seat work. And so in our gather round books, there is some seat work for each day. It should only take them about 15 minutes, but it's just something else that they can do on their own. So what I'm trying to do here <laughs> is give myself a little bit of flexibility. So instead of being like everyone starting school at nine, including mom, mom isn't really needed until 9.30. So that gives me a little bit of extra time if I need to quickly finish something up, um, finish getting ready for the day, whatever. It gives me an extra half hour where the kids are occupied doing independent work. So the older ones are doing seat work. For Zara, I wrote down handwriting just because she's not quite at the level where she can do the seat work by herself. During the year, she will get there, but for right now, we just need to focus more on um, her handwriting book where she's still learning the proper way to form the letters rather than just copy this out in her seat work. So 9.30, we go on to our Bible time and read aloud time. So we start our school day with our morning basket Bible time. I think our morning basket, it'll mostly just be Bible time. I might have a couple little books I'll read to Wesley in there. And then we jump straight into our read aloud. So I gave ourselves about a 45 minute block for that. And again, I wrote that down in Wesley's block, but he doesn't necessarily need to be there for it. This isn't like, oh, Wesley, you have to do school. Um, he can just be playing, but likely he will be at our feet playing because he likes to be with us. And so then we'll jump on to gather round. I gave ourselves an hour for gather round. That might not be enough for the older ones, but they'll have a little bit of extra time to finish that up later in the afternoon. So I wrote down gather round and then for the younger ones. So you probably can't understand what I'm, what I'm writing there. So I will explain in this 10, 15 block there. What that means is that on Mondays and Wednesdays with Zara, so after I read, 10.15 will start gather around. I will be done my reading portion by 10.45. At 10.45 on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm gonna help Zara with her language arts. So some days she can do her gather around pages. Other days, I'm gonna get her to focus on language arts and I will do that with her one-on-one. -on -one. And then Tuesday, Thursday, those are the only days Wesley's doing school. And so I wrote down for him, 10.45, Tuesday and Thursday at school. And I feel like, and I figure that'll just be about a half hour where I focus on him, um, learning how to hold his pencil, starting to do stuff in his tracing book and coloring pictures of different letters and stuff. It's really just a lot of fun stuff for him. But I wanted to write down, this is where I'm gonna focus on you. The other kids are gonna be doing their gather round work pages. They can mostly do that on their own, hopefully, we'll see. I'll definitely still be kind of pulled different directions, but I can mostly focus on Wesley. So, 11.15, uh, break. So if they're not done gather round, that's fine. They'll finish it in the afternoon. I do wanna give them a good break time. So usually that's going outside. Now, as we get into the winter months, I know that this break will be a lot longer than 15 minutes, simply because it takes them like eight minutes to get their winter stuff on and off again. <laughs> Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it takes a while. So I'm sure that that break time will extend a bit longer, but if they can, I'd like them to come in and finish math before lunch. So math time, lunch, I am pushing back from 12 o'clock to 12.15. I think that that'll give us a little bit more room to get that school worked out in the morning. I know that means that we will probably have more of a snack time in the morning. We don't always do snack. But if we're stretching that time out between breakfast and lunch, I think we'll more do a more regular snack time in the morning, which is fine. And then after lunch, I'm trying to go quickly through here, be thorough, but not be like super crazy long on this video. Um, one o'clock, so we'll do chores. Again, I'll show you the chore list in a second. 
And then the three older kids are all doing typing. And so I've just written down it, the boys are going to do typing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Charity will do her typing on Mondays and Wednesdays. Zara, I wrote down reading with mom. So we will do her reading lesson. And then uh, Wesley, I wrote down story time. So this is from 1 to 1.30. I mean, it, it might be 10 minutes that I do reading with both Zara and Wesley. But for the most part, Wesley's story time, that will be with one of the older kids who's not doing typing that day. Um, that is a job they can totally do. It's really great bonding time. And he loves it when his older siblings read to him. So most days it'll be an older sibling. And then at 1.30, the four older kids will all do reading time in their rooms in their rooms, on their beds, while Wesley goes down for her nap, for a nap. So this, I think I'll probably get them to be in their rooms for at least for 45 minutes. Like you need to be in your room reading. They need that time kind of apart. I need that time where I know if I need to film a video, during that block of time, the kids are all in their rooms. Um, and so that gives me the time to do that in a quiet, a quiet area of the house. And so they are just doing assigned reading at that point. I just have a stack of books that they get to pick from. Zara will just be reading like a little easy reader or even just looking at some books. And then at 2.30, or it might be before this, this is just kind of how I wrote it to make the schedule neat. If Elijah finishes reading and wants to get right up and right into finishing gather round, he can do that. Most days I assume it'll be free time at 2.30, but if they do have any gather round to finish up, uh, if they have a book report to do, They'll do that at 2.30. Charity will practice the piano at 2.30. And then three o'clock is usually when Wesley's waking up from his nap. And I'm trying, I'm trying to be a little bit more organized with piano lessons this year because I'm teaching the piano lessons and I'm teaching Zara this year. So my first year having four, four of my kids taking piano lessons. And so I think what's gonna go well is from three, three to four or more likely three to 4.15 or so. I will do the girls' piano lessons on Monday and the boys' piano lessons on Friday. And that is our full school year. This feels freeing to look at. I'll be honest, it also feels a little bit overwhelming. I'm looking at this like, okay, we'll be fine. When I look at it, it looks like a lot, but I know we'll get into it and we'll, we'll get into a rhythm. And I know that the kids will work quicker some days and have more, more free time throughout the day too. The other thing, so I'll, again, I'm gonna show you all about chores in a second. Sorry, I just kicked the tripod. Um, but the way we're doing chores this year, I think it'll free up a little bit more time too in the morning. So in that block from seven to nine, the kids are absolutely allowed to start on math to start on seat work, to start something early. So if they wanna do math early and have a longer, way longer break before lunch, they can do math when they get up at seven in the morning. They can do that at 8.30 if they're done breakfast and done you know, piano practice. So uh, that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. We might do this for a month and then I'm like, yeah, that didn't work. Let's switch it up. We might. I don't know, but that's that's our plan. So the next thing I wanna show you is my chore chart. I just typed this up on the Pages app, but first I have to show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Look how well those colors go together. I just was really happy with how those look together. I'm gonna to put them both, laminate them both, put them on the wall underneath our whiteboard. I kind of wish I had done this landscape style too, so it would look really nice and neat, but here is our chore chart. So what I've written is we're changing things up in the morning. So first off, before breakfast, get dressed morning devotions. You can't come down to breakfast if those aren't done. And bed made, I should have written that down. But get dressed and do your morning devotions. The, the um, Charity, Simeon, and Zara, they all do what's called Patch the Pirate devotions. It goes with our um, Wednesday night Bible study at church. They get these books where they have a devotions every day. Um, I need to get something for Elijah. That's something I still need to do. If you guys know of a devotional that's really good for preteens, let me know um, because I do need to find something for him. So it's not just like, read your Bible. Like just give him a little devotions to do. And then at breakfast time, we are doing a make your own breakfast this year. So in the past, the kids took turns making breakfast and that worked fine, but everyone moves differently in the morning. Some of the kids are up and they're ready for breakfast at 7.15. Some of them are like, I'm calling them and practically dragging them out of bed at eight o'clock to come down for breakfast. And so I thought this year we're gonna do make your own breakfast. So when I say make your own breakfast, 
that doesn't mean that it's a free for all because if it was everybody would choose cereal every single morning and I don't want that I still want like healthy oatmeal and toast and stuff so but what that does mean is that I am going to still choose like today is oatmeal day everyone grab a packet of oatmeal make your own breakfast today is toast I'll have the toaster sitting on the counter I'll have the loaf of bread sitting out but everyone's gonna come and make their own breakfast but I'll most days still they will know what breakfast is gonna be I also want to do more like make ahead breakfast like muffins and stuff um, but it'll be like a make your own breakfast thing uh, I will have Elijah making breakfast for Wesley every day and I will have um, Charity making breakfast for Zara every day. And then when breakfast is done, each of the kids are gonna wash, dry, and put away their own dishes. So I will I will definitely be doing some dishes because I'll wash like the prep dishes, wipe the table and stuff, but they will take care of their dishes from the meal and then they have to brush their teeth. So that's it. That's what they have to do in the morning before school. Those things need to be done. And then at lunch, I do have some assigned chores. Elijah's gonna wash the dishes, Charity will dry the dishes, Simeon will sweep the floor, Zara will take out the recycling. That used to be a breakfast job, the recycling, but I thought we'll just do it at lunch. And Wesley will set the table at lunch. So then at supper, the chores kind of rotate. So meal prep and wash dishes, Elijah and Charity will kind of take turns and go back and forth. I want to, I really want to focus on getting them to be more comfortable in the kitchen making a dinner because I would love to maybe in a year or even less have Elijah making dinner once a year. He's at an age where he could do that. One, did I say once a year? Once a week. <laughs> um, Simeon will dry the dishes. Uh, Zara will set the table and Wesley will clean up the toy room before supper. So they all have a different job than they did at lunch. I guess Elijah might have to wash dishes at lunch and supper sometimes. That's okay. And then at bedtime, they're gonna clean their rooms. I was trying to figure out when are they gonna clean their rooms because over the summer we've had such a good routine of everybody clean their rooms in the morning. That's one of their things after breakfast. Everybody go to your rooms and clean them before playtime. And I'm like, how am I gonna keep this going? Cause I, I get so tired of like, okay, I'm gonna come and say goodnight to them and their floor is just a disaster. And like, we need something steady to keep on top of cleaning their rooms. So I think that we'll do that before bedtime. But this video is going on forever. Maybe I should have split up our homeschool schedule and chores or whatever. But I wanted to quickly, quickly show you these books. So I printed up a book for Elijah and a book for Charity. I thought that it was time for them to kind of take charge a little bit more in their school days and prove themselves diligent and responsible. And so what I have on the first page here, I have a reading record. So they're gonna write down every time they finish a book, they are going to check off that they completed it, write down the title, write down the author, and then I can also kind of check in their books and be on top of um, Elijah's gonna do book reports each, each uh, book he reads this year. So they have, their books are identical. So I'll just show you the one here. One, two, three, uh, four. Four of those pages for filling out what books they have read. And then it goes on to this page, which says the weekly student plan. And then the whole rest of this book, the entire rest of this book, this was a free printable. I will link it down below. I didn't buy on Etsy. It was just free. I think you had to sign on to a mailing list or something, but I did get it for free. Uh, every page is gonna look like this. I'll do some B-roll so you can see it a little bit better. But I write down what week it is, and then I will write down uh, what they need to complete each day. For instance, like, okay, it's time for you to do a book report today. You need to complete these pages in your other book. You need to spend 30 minutes reading this book that you're on. I think I'm just gonna try to sit down on Sundays and just write out kind of what I've expected. It's not gonna be like super thorough. It'll more just be like extra work, like make sure you do your typing this day. Extra work that they can even, you know, I'll write down, okay, do a book report this week. And then they can, if they want to do that early, they can do it early. It kind of gives them a little bit of responsibility in how they do their school day, what days they complete certain things. So again, that is our first year doing something like that. And maybe we'll do it for a month and I'll be like, this just didn't really work. It wasn't really helpful, but I think it will be helpful. So we'll try that out and see. I will definitely give an update at some point during the school year and let you know how everything is going because I'm showing you my best laid plans and then we'll see. We'll see what, what comes of it. Um, thank you for watching if you stuck through to the end. I'm excited for this school year and I start out with my with my best um, plan, best effort, and I know everything's not going to go perfectly and so I try to be organized 
have everything laid out, and then once it starts, be flexible, be patient. So those are the plans for this school year. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out the links I'll link down below. And if you think this is helpful to someone else, I would love if you would share it and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.